Are you guys ready to check out St. Lucia's swankiest hotels? Buckle up. In this video, we're gonna take you on a quick tour of St. Lucia's swankiest hotels, from budget-friendly options to the best of the best. We'll also provide links to our complete tours and reviews for each hotel. So how do we decide what we think's best? Well, we spent a lot of time researching what looked to be great hotels, but you all know looks and websites can be deceiving. We came up with a short list of eight hotels in St. Lucia to test drive. Then we stayed at these eight hotels, but can only recommend six. The other two were pretty big disappointments that didn't live up to the hype. Here are our six recommendations. We're gonna to organize today's video by area, South, Central, and North St. Lucia. This map's available for download on our website. Our first stop is at the Stonefield Villa Resort, an adults-only resort with 17 individual bungalows built into the hill around the resort. Most have great views and private pools. There are one, two, and even up to five bedroom villas available. I'd say this place has the second best views in St. Lucia. The resort's not on the beach, but there is a shuttle, and you also have the option of walking down to the beach. It takes about 15 minutes, assuming you don't get lost, which is a distinct possibility. The bungalows are laid out nicely, but I wasn't a fan of some of the finishes or the harsh lighting in the room. But I am a fan of the spacious bungalows with indoor-outdoor living. We're recommending the Stonefield Resort because of the world-class views and the laid-back vibe. This feels a lot like a honeymooners resort, but there were some older couples here too. For this part of St. Lucia, I'd say this is a relative bargain. Next is the Ladera, a 37 room adults only resort with probably the best views in St. Lucia. It's not on the beach, but there is a shuttle. The room's really interesting because it only has three walls with no wall between you and your fabulous view. There's also a plunge pool in the room that almost seems to beckon, along with a glass of champagne at sunset. Even though there's no AC, it doesn't really matter because you're on top of the hill. The breezes keep things cool and you sleep with a mosquito net around the bed to keep the critters at bay. There's just one restaurant and bar on site. Like the rest of the hotel, they have gorgeous views. The mediocre pool, also with great views, is next to the bar and restaurant. There's also hiking trails on site that are connected to a network of off-site trails. This is definitely a splurge option. It's expensive. And I think the place could really be elevated with some better furniture and finishes, which did disappoint me. But again, the views are crazy good. The Rabot Hotel, also known as Hotel Chocolat, is across the street from the Ladera. What it doesn't have in views, it more than makes up for with great design. I'll go out on a limb and say that if you're into modern, clean design, this is probably your best bet in St. Lucia. And by the way, the views aren't bad. This is a 25 room boutique hotel and it too is adults only. But don't worry, we have two hotels coming up that welcome kids. The hotel's not on the beach, but there is a shuttle. There are two basic room types here, the 450 square foot plantation type rooms, and the 750 square foot rooms with great views of the pitons and glimpses of the ocean. The bathroom and veranda are amazing. There's a gorgeous pool and two restaurants on site. 
I love the modern restaurant with its framed view of the Piton, as well as the modern open design. They maybe had the best food I tried on St. Lucia, but I do have to say that the Naked Fisherman in the north is right there with them. More on that in a few minutes. The hotel's attached to a working cacao plantation, and you can walk over and do a tour and even make your own chocolate. This is not a cheap hotel, but lower cost than the Ladera and Sugar Beach. The Sugar Beach Resort is pure decadence, full stop. It probably has the best beach in St. Lucia and is situated between St. Lucia's iconic pitons. The setting is world-class and, by the way, kids are welcome here. There are rooms and bungalows of all sizes. I stayed in the lowest price sugar mill rooms. That was on the smaller side, but with a gorgeous outdoor space and a plunge pool. In addition to the hotel-like rooms, they have beachside rooms and standalone bungalows that range from super expensive to OMG. The bungalows are laid out like a little village. The landscaping's beautiful. The building details are exceptional. It's really a wonderful setting. One of my favorite things about this hotel is the extensive art collection. They have a great eye for art, and it shows. The gym's also exceptional, with maybe the best architecture of any gym I've ever seen. And the spa is unique and interesting too, built like a little village in the jungle. The pool's gorgeous too, and they have multiple dining options, two beachside restaurants and two formal restaurants to choose from. Now we're moving to the central west coast to another adults-only resort called Tikai, with 33 bungalows built into the side of a hill with nice sea views. What I liked most about this place was the spacious room and the very relaxing veranda. The plunge pool wasn't bad either. You can snorkel in the protected bay, or if you're certified, you can dive on the two shipwrecks that are right off the beach. And if you want to learn to dive, the resort has a paddy dive center. There are two dining options here, a laid back beach bar and restaurant, and a more formal dining option next to the pool. They also have the most extensive wine collection in St. Lucia. This is not the best beach in St. Lucia, but it's still pretty nice and the resort has sun loungers set up with the wait staff from the beachside restaurant serving food and drinks. Be aware that there are a lot of stairs involved from the beach to the hotel. We're recommending the Tikai because of the nice bungalows, the relaxing verandas, and the laid back vibe. I'd also say it's a pretty good deal for St. Lucia, a solid mid-range option. <music> Lastly, we're headed to the northern tip of the island to Cap Maison, a Mediterranean-inspired boutique resort with 49 rooms. The beach here is beautiful. The waves are mellow and the water temperature was perfect. The beach restaurant and bar are one of my favorite things about Cap Maison. There's a very Caribbean vibe here. The bar is always hopping, the staff's friendly, and everyone seems to be having a good time. And by the way, kids are welcome here too. Our evening dinners at the beach were fun and relaxing. The barbecue they do here is excellent. And there's a second restaurant next to the pool on the cliff overlooking the ocean. There are a lot of different room options from villas, some with their own pools at ground level or even on the roof. There are smaller apartment style rooms too, with beautiful walkways leading to many of the rooms. Our villa was spacious and slept for with the kids on this pull out sofa. Plus it had two balconies and a roof deck with this amazing view. We're recommending the Cap Maison because of the great beach, the fun beach restaurant and bar, the beautiful setting, and the spacious rooms. In terms of price, this is on the higher end. A quick word on air conditioning. Not all hotels we're recommending have it, and I don't think you need it in St. Lucia, but I don't mind the heat that much either. In contrast, on a recent trip to Tulum, that has a pretty similar climate, 
I did think AC was necessary in some of those hotels. I can't be definitive, but in December and January at least, the nights cool off pretty nicely in St. Lucia, especially if you're close to the water. So I personally don't see AC as a necessity and tend to enjoy sleeping more connected to nature. Remember, we're supported by our viewers, not the hotels we review. So help us out by smashing that like button and why not subscribe? There are links below to our complete reviews and tours of these six hotels. And we've also put together a video with some ideas about what to do, when to come and all that kind of stuff. Here's a link to that.